The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. We've been learning about shift registers that can use parallel and serial data to expand the number of inputs or outputs available in a circuit. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a shift register to add more outputs to an Arduino. I'm going to use one of the most common and popular shift registers available, the 74HC595. This chip takes data in a single serial input at pin 14 and sends it to the eight parallel outputs labeled QA through H. Notice there are two clock pins. Pin 11, the shift clock, triggers bits of data to be shifted into the registers. And pin 12, the storage or latch clock, triggers data to be shifted out at the eight outputs simultaneously. This is an eight bit shift register. Only eight bits of data are stored at a time. On each low to high pulse of the shift clock at pin 11, new bits are shifted in one at a time from the serial data input. New bits shift in and across the eight storage registers. To shift bits from the storage registers to the outputs, we need the active low output enable pin. While the output enable pin is high, data in will be shifted into and stored in the storage registers. When output enable is pulled low, data can be shifted from the storage registers to the outputs. This requires a second clock pulse, a low to high signal at the latch clock, pin 12. When this clock signal pulses high, the eight bits currently stored are shifted to the eight outputs. The shift clock can continue to shift new bits in, but they will only be shifted out when the latch clock pulses. No matter how many new bits are shifted in, they are only transferred to the outputs on a clock pulse at the latch clock pin. Again, if the output enable pin is pulled high, disabling it, bits may still shift in, but the data at the outputs will not change, even if the latch clock pulses. So that's how the chip works theoretically. Let's look at how we can connect the circuit so we can see how it works practically. Here I have my Arduino handy and the shift register placed on a breadboard. The ground rail on the breadboard connects to one of the ground pins here on the Arduino. And the power rail connects to the five volt pin here on the Arduino. For the shift register, start by connecting the power and ground pins. Pin eight to the ground rail and pin 16 to the power rail. We always want the outputs enabled, so we connect the output enable, pin 13, to ground to hold it low. To control the shift register using the Arduino, we need three Arduino pins, one for the serial input signal and two more for the shift and latch clock signals. First is the serial data in, pin 14 on the shift register. Connect that to Arduino pin six. Next, the shift clock, pin 11, connects to Arduino pin seven. Last, the latch clock, pin 12, connects to Arduino pin eight. For the sake of this example, I'm also going to control the clear pin on the shift register so I can program the count to always start at zero. This will make it easier for you to see what's happening on the LEDs. So I'll connect pin 10 on the shift register to pin five on the Arduino. Normally we could connect that pin straight to VCC to hold it high and inactive. Well, that takes care of all of the inputs of the shift register. Now for the outputs. Each of the eight output pins connects to an LED. The shift register pin connects to a current limiting resistor, which connects to the anode of the LED, while the cathode of the LED then connects to ground. The outputs QA through H are in order as follows. Pin 15, then pins one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The leftover pin nine is the serial output, which we're not using for now. 
That's all of the connections, so let's talk about the Arduino code. To start, variables are created to name each pin we're using. Clear pin, serial data, shift clock, and latch clock. Again, the clear pin is just being used for this example, so you could typically leave it off in your application. In Arduino code, void setup runs once at startup. Here, each pin is declared as an output. On the 595, the clear pin is active low, which we can see here on the function table from the datasheet. To reset all the LEDs low, we set the clear pin low to activate the clear, then set it high again to make it inactive. That's it for void setup, now for the program loop. Any code in void loop will loop continuously as long as the Arduino is powered. Start with a for loop. Creating an integer shift count, we declare a starting value of zero and declare its value is less than 256. Why 256? As we've discussed in previous videos, in binary, we count using only zeros and ones. Each digit carries over after counting to one. I'm using an 8-bit shift register with eight outputs, one for each bit. The highest 8-bit binary number you can get is 255. So to reach a count where all LEDs are on, we have to count to 255. Next, shift count plus plus tells the program to add one every time the loop program runs, or increment shift count by one. After the count is increased, latch clock goes low, preventing the outputs from changing. Then we use the shift out function. This function shifts out a byte of data one bit at a time, starting from either the most or least significant bit. Each bit is written in turn to a data pin, after which a clock pin is pulsed to indicate that the bit is available. That code looks like this. Once all the bits are shifted, we rewrite the latch clock high to transfer the data from the storage registers to the outputs. And lastly, we delay 500 milliseconds, or a half a second, so that we see a visible transition between shifts. I'll plug in the USB cord and upload the code from my computer to the Arduino. The Arduino and circuit get powered through the USB cord. So as soon as the code finishes loading, the circuit begins to count and the LEDs display the count number in binary. A lit LED is a one, while a dark LED is a zero. With a delay of 500 milliseconds per clock pulse, it takes approximately 127 seconds, half of 255, which is about two minutes to reach a full count and have all eight LEDs lit. Let's skip to the end so we can see that. LEDs lit at 255, then reset back to zero with all LEDs off. It's time to revisit that poor pin that we left abandoned. Pin 9, the serial output. This pin can be used to cascade multiple shift registers to add more and more outputs, and it still only requires three output pins on the Arduino. To do this, the second shift register is connected just like the first. Power, ground, output enable, clear, and the eight outputs. To maintain only needing three Arduino pins, the shift clock pins and the latch pins of both shift registers are tied together so the clocks on both chips are controlled by the same two Arduino pins as before. The serial output, pin nine, of the first shift register gets connected to the serial in, pin 14, of the second shift register. The data will be shifted from the Arduino through the first chip to the second chip. No changes to the code are needed. Let's plug in the Arduino to power it up and see what it looks like. To start, all the LEDs reset to off and the program begins. Notice that the outputs on the second shift register count on every clock pulse, but are one digit behind the first shift register. Why do you think that is? So that's how to use a shift register to add more outputs to an Arduino Uno. 
and you can keep cascading shift registers to add more outputs, 8, 16, 24, 32. There's probably a limit, but I don't know what it is. One thing I want to make sure you remember is that the shift and latch clocks can be independently controlled. You can shift a number of bits into the storage registers before they are transferred to the outputs. So each latch clock pulse could completely change the data at the outputs. You can make the LEDs do whatever you want. So what can you come up with? Build your circuits and post your results on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. That's also where you can go to post any additional comments or questions. Happy learning.